All right, folks. Uh, Mr. Hansen here. Uh, here we're going to take a look at the next uh, assignment in the Introduction to Assembly Design uh, Learning Pathway here in our uh, Onshape tutorials. Uh, we've already done one exercise where we inserted a part into our Onshape assembly. So we should know how to like insert a part and position it correctly. Um, here, With this exercise uh, on mating parts, we're actually going to look at how to join things together. Uh, and this is going to let us actually, you know, test how things fit together in on shape, so how different parts interact with each other. It's also going to let us simulate the motion uh, that it can exist between different parts. This is a real cheap, quick, easy way to uh, test a design before you actually spend, you know, lots of money and time building a physical prototype or sending this to manufacturing. Uh, it's a good chance to, you know, check and see if we got any bugs with our physical design uh, that we need to fix before we do those more expensive things. So um, I've already got the assignment open. There's a public document for you guys to get started with. I've made a copy of that so I can edit it. And we should be ready to uh, take a look at assembling this bar clamp design. So if you've used a bar clamp, it's just you know something that you can s slide together and screw things together to hold work pieces uh, next to each other, like when you're working in the workshop. There's a bunch of examples in our workshop if you want to take a look at that. Uh, first things first, we do need to create an assembly. So I'm going to hit that plus sign in the bottom left corner. I'm going to go to create assembly, uh, which will create our new assembly tab down at the bottom. Let me rename that. I'm going to name it something meaningful. So that's uh, clamp assembly. And I'm going to uh, save that. And of course, before we start assembling things, we have to actually insert those parts. So the insert menu is up at the top. Click insert. Now we've got two part studios in this document, one with the clamp parts, one with the handle parts. Uh, so I'm going to start with the clamp parts. I'm going to click those guys. Uh, over in my work area, I'm going to click, and that's going to place those. Make sure you hit the green check mark to save the insert for your parts. Uh, now we've got our parts here. Now some of y'all might be tempted to just you know stop here and say, hey, look, it looks assembled. Uh, but in fact, if I click and drag these parts, there's nothing actually joining these together. They're just free floating here, and they happen to be position close to each other just because that's how they were created in the part studio. Um, and you know, kind of the first thing most people try when they're doing assemblies is to do like click and drag and can I get this sort of close to where it's supposed to be and make it kind of look like something. And that's a not a great way to rigorously test the fit of this object. Uh, but fortunately Onshape's got tons of assembly tools to help us piece this thing together. And in fact, if you look at the top toolbar, um, it looks a little different than the part studio. These are what are called the uh, assembly mates. And there's several different types, types of mates that we can use. Uh, and these are different ways that we can connect two parts together. Uh, and so let's look at the first assembly mate. Uh, that's probably the most common one we're going to use uh, is the fasten mate. Uh, we will use the slider mate and the cylinder mate in the rest of this assignment. Uh, before we do that, we should think about positioning our, our assembly. Uh, what happens sometimes if you start simulating motion, especially with complicated designs, um, things can go a little bit crazy if you don't have a part fixed somewhere in your assembly to keep things grounded. Uh, so I'm going to actually ground this uh, rectangular bar here. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna, I am gonna—I want to go ahead and center this in the origin to keep my design uh, centered in my workspace. So I'm going to right-click that point, move to origin. I'm going to right-click this part and fix it so this part is grounded and it no longer moves around. So now I'm ready to actually go through and create my mates that'll attach the other parts to this silver bar. Uh, so starting with a fasten mate, a fasten mate is just what it sounds like. It fastens two parts together. Uh, in fact, it fastens them together so that they don't move. So think about gluing two things together or welding them together or you know, using wood screws to glue two or screw two pieces of wood together. Uh, once they're fastened, they, they can't move. So um, I'm going to start with uh, this piece here on the left. And it's got a little notch cut out that should fit on the end of this bar. So I'm going to kind of zoom in, rotate around until I can see the inside of this notch. Um, and if that bar is inserted correctly, it should be all the way against the back face of this notch. So I'm going to try and click that uh, center. Uh, you'll notice that when you mouse over objects and faces and lines, that, that points pop up and this little circular thing pops up. Um, that little circular thing is called a mate connector. 
And what the make connector is, is uh, it's going to tell you which parts of our part we're going to try and get lined up together. And so I'm thinking about the center point here because that's usually a pretty easy point to pick. Um, you can also, you know, select the end points of lines, um, and the midpoints of lines. Uh, but I'm going to try and get the center of this back rectangle. There we go. You might have to like zoom around, like zoom in and out, rotate around to get the software to pick those right points. It just takes a little practice to get used to that. But I'm going to make sure I got that center point selected. I'm going to zoom out. And if I got this correctly positioned, that should fit on the end of my silver bar here. So I'm going to see if I could select that. All right. And those two pieces are lined up correctly. So I'll just kind of rotate around and sort of do a quick inspection there, uh, see if it looks good. If it looks good to you, hit the green check mark. Uh, if you end up getting the wrong point selected and things look a little bit off or incorrect, hit escape and get out of the mate or you know control Z and back up a step and give it another shot. It's, it's easy to get things misaligned, especially as you're getting used to using the tools. Uh, so you can always back up and try again if things don't look quite like they should. Uh, the next mate is going to be a slider mate. So we've done our fasten mate. Um, and if you've used a bar clamp like this, you know there's a portion of the clamp that slides along the metal bar. Um, and the mate for this is going to be a slider mate, which again does just what it sounds like. It slides. Uh, and that points that I want to select, my mate connectors are going to be pretty pretty similar to what we just did. Like I, I wanna, I'm going to go ahead and start with like the end point here. I'm selecting that middle of that rectangular uh, face. And I, if that's lined up with this guy, it should line up with the center of the hole cut through this part of the clamp. I'm going to go ahead and hit the you know, green check mark and save that. Uh, and now what you can do, since we have a uh, mate created that has motion, sliding's a motion, uh, we should be able to click and drag that part and see how that motion works. And so we can see, you know, I can try to drag it in all directions, but it's only going to slide along that uh, bar, which is perfect for what a slider mate should do. Um, all right. One slight problem with how this is built is that it slides too far in either direction. Like, we obviously don't want this thing to be able to collide with the other piece of the clamp because that's just weird. Uh, good news is I can actually limit how far this thing can slide. So I'm going to double click to open up my slider. I'm going to there's a little checkbox down at the bottom that says limits. And I'm going to set some limits on how much this can slide. So I'm thinking it should go zero inches in one direction. Like it's already located where it needs to be in one direction. And I believe it says yeah, 7.5 inches left of the rod. So I'm, I'm going to set that maximum to 7.5. And there's a little play button here that will animate the mate itself. And so we can see, hey... Sweet. That looks like it's moving exactly like I would expect the actual bar clamp to move. Um, so you might have to play around with like the order of these numbers. Uh, depending on how you clicked your mate connectors, you may have to go from like negative 7.5 to 0. Uh, so if it doesn't look like it should, then try some different numbers. Um, let me hit the green check mark to save that. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and right click my slider mate and reset it. Um, and let's just make sure that I'm back where I started. I've got my initial positioning for that mate. Um, all right, so next is going to be the clamp handle. So there are three parts to the clamp handle. I'm going to go up to insert, click the handle parts, click in the workspace to set that and hit the green check mark. Um, again, it looks like it's already built, but if you click and drag parts, you'll notice nothing is attached and I can't really look at the movement of any of these pieces. Uh, so, let's go ahead and do some uh, mates between these two guys. Uh, and the first one's a piece of cake. Uh, this blue threaded portion of my handle just needs to stick in that hole in the red handle. Uh, and that shouldn't move relative to each other. So that's going to be a fastened mate. So I'm going to click fasten. I'm going to rotate around so I can click this uh, circular face on the end. And if I'm putting this piece together that should be inserted into this cylindrical hole. I just want to make sure I got the back edge of that cylindrical hole selected. You'll notice sometimes with the cylinders, um, if you got the edge of the cylinder 
selected, you will have three potential mate points, uh, one on either side of the cylinder and one in the middle. Uh, here we want to make sure we're uh, mated to the rightmost endpoint in this case. I'm going to hit my green check mark, save that, piece of cake. Now these two parts are fastened together, so when I click and drag them, uh, they're going to move together. All right, the next piece is uh, going to be a mate between this light blue portion and the dark blue threaded portion. And you'll notice uh, it's kind of round on the end. It's a sphere on the end, well, technically a hemisphere. And if you've used this type of bar clamp, you know that there's a ball joint between the end cap and the threaded rod, uh, which lets this thing pivot around and uh, clamp together pieces of you know, material that might be uneven. Uh, to simulate that, there is, in fact, a ball joint. So I'm going to click the ball mate. We've got to be a little bit careful here. I'm, I'm going to select this uh, spherical portion on the end. Make sure you're not you know, accidentally selecting one of these cylinders. We want the sphere because uh, a ball joint is a joint between two spherical entities. So I got this ball joint on the end. Uh, you know, same thing for the light blue side. I want to make sure I don't have the cylinder selected. I want to make sure I have the inside of this sphere selected. So if you've got the right thing selected, you should see part of a sphere highlighted. I'm going to click those two things, hit the green check mark, and there I've got a ball joint between those two things. And you can see what the ball joint you know, does if you click and drag one of these guys. Well, let me get a... You can see that this ball joint can maintain an angle between, or you know, any angle between these two parts. Uh, pretty handy for this type of device. Let me go ahead and uh, reset that ball joint. All right, we are almost done. We've got one more mate to work on. Um, and we just need to attach this handle to the rest of my assembly. So uh, this is a little bit different, but it's pretty it's a little bit similar to what we already did with the slider mate. When this handle is inserted into this hole here on the bottom edge of the clamp, um, it should be able to slide in and out. It also should be able to rotate freely. And so it's not strictly a slider mate. That's something called a cylindrical mate. So a cylindrical mate is kind of like a rotate combined with a slide. Uh, and so I'm going to select the cylindrical mate up here on the toolbar. And if I think about this, you know, red handle portion being inserted into this part, um, this little hole in my clamp, that should, if it's, you know, all the way inserted in there, should be mating this particular part of my handle cylinder. Let me see if I can rotate around. Uh, that should be able to push all the way up against this outside edge of my orange uh, clamp body. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check mark to save that. And we can see two things. I should be able to rotate this. Cool. And I should be able to slide this in and out. Now, of course, we're going to have kind of the same problems we already had. This thing can slide way too far. Uh, so let me open up my cylindrical mate and we're going to set some limits for that. So I believe it's 3.5 inches it should be able to go, uh, th sorry, 3 inches. So let me set my minimum at 0, set my maximum at 3. Let me animate this to see what that looks like. It looks like it's actually going the <laughs> wrong direction. Um, so let me see if I can reverse that. It needs to go 3 inches in the other direction to correctly simulate this motion. So I'm going to set the minimum to negative 3, set the maximum to 0, hit the green check mark, let me go ahead and animate that. And just to verify that's you know, going the correct direction. So that, that looks good to me. And that's it for this particular assembly. Uh, do take some time. There's a couple different mates here, but play around with it. You know, click parts, move things together, see if you can you know, figure out what these different mate types do. Uh, you should be able to, you know, click and drag the different parts of this and see how they interact. But it looks like it's, you know, the way I've got it set up, it's doing a pretty good job um, simulating the motion of this bar clamp. Um, now, you should uh, do the self-check here. Uh, in the assignment, it's going to ask you to calculate the center of mass. Uh, to do that correctly, you will need to reset uh, the position because the position of the different parts in our assembly can change that center of mass. Uh, so I'm going to you know, go to my cylindrical mate, hit reset, go to my ball mate, hit reset, go to my slider mate, hit reset, and that's the original configuration that I had. 
Uh, you can check the mass properties by using uh, the little measure tool down here, and that'll tell you what the center of mass is. So give that a shot, see if you did this correctly.